Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, this is our second student-led internship discussion of the week. So we have lots of really great presentations to hear and students to hear from. So I am not gonna talk much, which I like. I like hearing from students and I like students hearing from each other and not much from me. So I'm gonna let you all speak. And depending on how much time we have at the end, I may have some questions. Um, very simple questions for you to answer, but typically you give enough information and great things to say that I don't really have to ask many questions. So I am going to start it off with Jillian. Um, so Jillian, take it away. Okay, so um, I'm doing my internship at Windrush Farm. So it's um, therapeutic writing and I've been loving it so far. Um, the Windrush mission is to promote confidence, independence, and well-being in children and adults with physical, cognitive, or emotional challenges through therapeutic riding and horse-related programs. So it's pretty much anybody and everybody um, that they take. Um, so here are just some pictures of the different populations, children, adults, teens, seniors, um, anybody. So one of my supervisors, I have two, but she's my main supervisor. Um, her name is Betsy Dalton. She's the office manager and she is my supervisor when I'm in person. So I do a combo of in-person and remote. So when I'm in person, um, she's my supervisor. She um, has a lot of different jobs every day, but she supervises all the interns. She makes calls to clients whenever a call needs to be made and she fields all the questions and concerns and she updates um, all the files that are required by law to keep all the files for, I think it's like seven years or something like that. So um, she makes sure they're all updated and there's a lot of them, so it's a big job. Um, my other supervisor is Janet Nipman. She's actually the CEO of Windrush Farm and she's my supervisor when I'm doing remote work. Um, she, um, on the daily, supervises all the, of the staff. She makes all final decisions regarding the farm and like anything like that. She coordinates events. So they just had their annual fundraising gala and she coordinated all of that. Um, she delegates tasks to different staff and volunteers. And then she does a daily round of the farm just to kind of make sure that everything is good and um, running well. So my roles when I'm in person, I my main role is a side walker. So what that means is I walk beside the horses and um, the riders. And my main focus is to keep the rider safe. Um, there's horse handlers whose main focus is to keep the horses safe. But my main focus is the riders. And um, I am working on not just keeping them safe, but also helping them understand what the instructor is saying. Um, a lot of them, if they, especially if they have cognitive disabilities, they need it broken down a little bit more or just even were just repeated. So I'm there to kind of translate it to them if they need that and um, just make it nice and clear and also just build a relationship with them and help them to feel um, loved and welcomed. I also do some horse care. Um, I also teach some of the kids how to do horse care depending on the classes. And then I have to sometimes do like reports of different clients and um, just kind of like status reports. And if something like goes wrong, then I have to report that sometimes. Um, and then every once in a while I, I do meetings. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had to do an HR meeting because of some stuff that went down, but there's also just like check-in meetings, which is good. And then um, for my remote work, I'm doing a lot of updating their databases and a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and then also some research and um, just on different data that they can bring as evidence and present at their fundraising events um, to get more money for stuff. Okay, so why I chose Windrush. Um, the first thing is the environment. When I went there for my interview, I just loved it. It's like in the middle of the woods. It's super pretty and like so relaxing to be there. Um, the second thing is the people. I love the people there. They're so sweet. I was stressed, honestly, during my internship that like, you know, I get along with everybody, but I don't know. I was stressed that I wasn't going to fit in, but they're all super, super nice. And um, 
super welcoming and like also easy to ask questions to all that stuff um the third reason is experience I had a lot of experiences with horses um so it kind of felt like a good, good fit and it wasn't something that I was brand new at but also was something that I could grow in and then impact um watching the clients like grow and bond with the horses and just really gain like confidence and improve in total crazy aspects of their life is super super impactful which I love um so some challenges communication with the farm they are all like middle-aged most of them so sometimes tech stuff is not their strong suit um so a lot of the time it's a lot easier to talk to them in person but I know that's hard because a lot of times like I want to send an email or call them um they don't always respond to emails so that's been something that has been hard um another thing is client behavioral issues um because it's such a range of different um disabilities and disorders that kind of stuff there is often you know like in anything they act out and just making sure that they're safe is hard sometimes when um, some of them are runners, some of them are, you know, biters, all that stuff. So it's hard. But um, yeah, and safety concerns. Um, there's a road that goes right through the middle of the farm. And that is definitely hard because we have to cross cross that a lot of time with like kids on the horses. Um, and sometimes cars go really fast down that road. So that's definitely something that is a challenge, but um, it's definitely manageable. Um, so my favorite part of my internship is I love the change of pace from all my classes and other parts of my life. It's so relaxing to go there. And I feel like even though like I'm working there, it's also like refreshing in a way. So I love it. And that's it. Oh, this is a picture of one of my clients that they posted on Instagram. And I just thought it was so cute because she's the sweetest little thing. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. It's nice to hear about both things, sort of the remote, and um, the in-person. So I think it's cool to have a mix of both. So great, thank you. All right, up next is Vanessa. My name is Vanessa. And I'm doing my internship at St. Anne's Home in Methuen. St. Anne's mission statement is to support, nurture, rehabilitate, educate, and advocate for children, adolescents, and young adults who are faced with serious emotional, behavioral, mental health, and learning disabilities um, by providing high quality state-of-the-art programming and services in collaboration with these children, their families, and other community and state agencies and resources. St. Anne's assists them in overcoming their disabilities in the least restrictive setting. I'm interning on St. Anne's CBAT unit and CBAT stands for Community-Based Acute Treatment Program. CBAT is a temporary alternative or step down from psychiatric hospitalization. The populations the CBAT unit provides services to are males and females between the ages of five and 17. And these are typically children and adolescents who experience mental health, behavioral, emotional, and learning challenges. And many of these children have also experienced forms of trauma. The staff that work on the CBAT unit include the psychiatrists, the therapists, the child care counselors, and then my unit director and supervisor, Jay. The role of the intern, the child care counselor intern is responsible for taking care of children and taking on sort of like parental responsibilities, providing children with a positive, supportive, and safe environment, watching the children, being able to control situations, and you also have to attend weekly staff meetings. Why I chose St. Anne's. St. Anne's Home was my first choice when applying to internships. I was interested it's in St. Anne's because I wanted to gain a hands-on experience working with children and adolescents who experience mental health and behavioral challenges. And this position definitely allows you to gain a lot of hands-on experience with that population. The child care counselor intern position is a great learning opportunity, but it does come with some challenges. And these challenges include dealing with a wide range of behaviors from the children, working long hours, 
and having all the skills required to provide proper care to the children. And but the staff at St. Anne's are very supportive and they do help you through these challenges. What I enjoy about my internship so far, I really enjoy working with the children. It's very rewarding. And I also like like that I get to contribute to positive experiences for them. Another aspect that I've really enjoyed is hearing the therapist perspectives during the staff meetings. And that's all. Thank you, Muted Katie. Thank you. I'm not used to having myself on mute. So, all right. So next we have um, Ness and Abby. So, so I, I don't know why they got grouped together because they're at different. Okay, so they are doing it separately. So some people yeah. are at the same site or doing it together. So that's great. So, um, um, I think Abby was next. Yeah. Well, first, so you were able to share your screen, right? Uh, yeah, I was. Perfect. Great. Okay, I'll go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, so my internship was at NFI Haverhill. Um, so full name is NFI Massachusetts. Their mission statement is to maximize potential for the full promise of community living. Um, the population that we serve um, is a range. Uh, they provide many different services to adults, young adults, children, and families. They also provide services for substance abuse, um, residential service to those with disabilities. They have programs for detained youth. Um, they offer a lot of different trainings and they also have counseling for um, families or individuals. So I work specifically within NFI's SOAP program, that stands for Structured Outpatient Addiction Program. Um, and this provides treatment to adults with addiction and co-occurring mental health disorders. Um, so we do two sessions and they go five days a week. Um, the average treatment length is six to eight weeks. So it's basically like group therapy, um, like in the picture shown. It starts with a check-in every day, um, and then the session leaders present different types of topics that will help them with their recovery. So like things like CBT or maybe like um, healthy relationships or things like that. Um, it's a really good environment because it makes for a great um, community aspect. So the roles of those on staff, Kim Boysell is the di division director. She oversees the entire clinic. And then Shannon and Amanda are the clinical case managers who facilitate most of the NFI groups. So they're the session leaders that are presenting um, like different ideas and things for them to learn. And then Katrina Jackson is my direct uh, supervisor and she's the program director. So a little bit about Katrina, she provides support and supervision of the staff. She manages behavior issues with the clients, like if someone has to be terminated, um, tracking insurance, author authorizations and billing, and then reviewing records and paperwork. And then she also helps to build SOAP curriculum. She communicates with referral sources. So like the reason people are in SOAP, so that would be like probation officers or DCF. Um, and then she also has to do all this while adhering to funding contracts. Um, she has been at SOAP for over 17 years. She's very proud of the program they've created. It's a safe and non-judgmental space for people that are struggling. Um, she really, really loves being a part of a strength-based um, client-centered program where we can celebrate even the small successes. So my role as an intern at SOAP um, has been mostly observing SOAP sessions. So I'll um, observe like how the session leaders interact with the clients. Um, I also observe the client's uh, interaction, I'm sorry, their reactions to the interventions and their attitudes towards it. So I do that so that I can input it into the session notes for insurance purposes. I also attend A meetings with the clients. Um, it's like a five minute walk from the place. So sometimes I'll walk there with the clients. And when I go there, I take attendance. 
Um, so why did I choose NFI? Before starting, I didn't have much exposure to addiction besides media, um, but I didn't have any negative connotations because like the media I've seen portraying addiction kind of like brought light the struggles of it and like got rid of the stigma around it. Um, but I wanted exposure to different types of people struggling, so I didn't have like any reason not to work with addiction clients. Um, but after starting, it's been a really eye-opening experience. I've really enjoyed getting to know the clients and I'm really happy with my decision to um, be an intern at SOAP. What I like most about it is listening to their stories and coming to get to know the clients. Um, the clients really enjoy SOAP, so it's a really good community. I learn a lot about why people are the way they are. Um, and I know a lot more about the substance abuse population and other mental illnesses. Some of the challenges would be triggering topics. Obviously there's like topics of drugs, but also some people disclose like there's sexual abuse. So that can be like triggering to hear. Um, empath um, behavior, like if you're an empath, it might be hard because there's a lot of like devastating stories. So you're just hearing a lot of like trauma. Um, then earning trust, you have to earn trust of the clients. A lot of them have been burned by other clinicians and just like the system. So they can be untrustworthy and sometimes lie. Um, and then also just the reality of working with this population is that recovery isn't linear. It's not like these people are just going to never do drugs again, but it's not really about that. It's about celebrating their small victories. And then lastly, making the clients comfortable. Um, it's not much of a challenge, but that's definitely something that you need to do here to make it not a judgment zone and so that they can more, they can open up more to you. Um, that's all. Awesome, thank you, Abby. Thank you for hitting to unmute, thank you. So I know Ness is next, but she's uh, letting me know about some tech issues she's having. So if we could put her to last, that would be awesome. That's completely fine. So Olivia, you are up. Is that going? Yes. Okay. I just like to check before I like start talking about everything. Cause sometimes I feel like technology has it out for me. Um, so I do, am doing my internship at fellowship housing opportunities. Um, so it's located in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, and so that's our logo. Um, so the mission statement is um, fellowship housing provides decent, safe, affordable housing with support to members of the community who live with mental illness. Um, their vision is a community in which people with mental illness are able to manage their daily lives, be good neighbors and access, access resources and find acceptance. Um, so within fellowship housing, they have a few different like ways of living. Um, the one I work in is the community um, residence. So upon moving in, um, so this, the community residence has um, up to 12 adults who receive 24 seven support as they work towards independent living. So when they move in, they establish goals with staff and case managers to help create a plan of action for growth and self-improvement. When a resident is ready to move to more independent housing, our staff can also assist them and help them with the help of their case manager to find a suitable solution often within one of um, fellowship housings, independent living where they like work with staff, but it's not 24 seven staff. Um, so the different roles of staff. So Herb is our executive director of like everything. So he oversees the entire fellowship housing. I actually got to meet him once. It was really cool. Ed is in charge of our program services. So a lot of times they'll do like little day trips or they'll make um, like night events. Um, they just try and get the residents more involved in the community. So like Ed will put on those programs. And then Ethan is our community residence manager. So Ethan is also my direct supervisor. Um, so he is in charge of tracking the residents. Um, so with that, he gets all their cases from um, any past hospital stay, any case manager. So he gets that and gets to really know the residents through that lens. Um, but he's also in charge of checking their med logs, creating all, um, creating their med logs, 
Um, and he is um, in charge of all the community integration specialists. So that's all the people that work in the house. So his office is in the house where I intern. So he's in charge of helping all the staff there as well and um, making sure um, all the residents' meds are up to date. He's been there for about 17 years. And what's really interesting is that he actually started as an intern. So it was kind of nice to talk to him about how like my experience has differed from his experience and how it's grown over 17 years. Um, so as an intern, um, my roles are, I help distribute medication. I help um, the residents in making dinner or like breakfast, really any meal, but dinner is the main meal we provide for them. Breakfast and lunch, they self-serve, but if they need help there, I'm there to help them. But dinner, um, we make for them, but we have an assistant, like one of them assist us. So I'll do that. I help check weight, blood pressure and blood glucose level um, with responsibilities. Um, to be kind and welcoming, always be a person they can go to if they need any help with anything, um, help when asked. And a big thing that I've learned is prompting residents for medication. Um, one of the big roles is um, distributing medication and getting the residents to take their medication isn't always easy. Sometimes they'll like just sleep through their medication. So it will be like three or four prompts for them to try and get them to come down. Um, so why fellowship? Um, it gave me a chance to try something new and see a population I hadn't considered working with before. I always thought I like was very set on kids. Um, and so I was interested to try just like a completely different population. They also um, let me um, distribute medication, which not a lot of internships do. So that was like really exciting for me to be able to see like the medication side of it and like the process that goes with that. One of the challenges um, is it was a lot of information at the beginning, um, just like learning the medications. Um, probably like the hardest part about learning the medications was pronouncing the medications um, because I hadn't worked with medications before or like in any setting like that. So learning like what why we give each medication the side effects and like reading all of that information was like really difficult but the people training me were like amazing and so patient and like really encouraged me to ask any questions I had which was awesome and then my favorite part is just like getting to know the residents and I have another favorite part as of recently um we've had new residents come in so really getting to know the families of the new residents and like getting to see how the residents transition has become one of my favorite parts um that's all. Um, thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Okay. Next up is Sam. So Sam, I will share yours for you. Okay. So let me get yours up. And you got the right one, right? I sent you two and I moved it. I got the right one. Cool. Um, should I open the right one? Okay. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Okay, yes, I am opening the right one. So I did the Compass program. Uh, um, if you go to the next slide, it's at Merrimack College, um, third floor of the uh, library. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the mission statement, Compass is a non-traditional program that seeks to foster student, can't see it. Student self-cultivation through academic immersion and deep intellectual, emotional engagement. So basically, students who are in high school who didn't do the best due to outside factors, um, the 
Compass program saw that th usually through um, recommendations through like guidance counselors or teachers that were like, this student is a very good individual, but because of these factors, um, they didn't do well. So we take them in and kind of give them a little bit of extra help. Um, so the population, it's freshman in college. Um, it's just the incoming individuals from high school who, like I said, had difficulty and abnormal stresses on them as a student in high school. Um, so we just acknowledged that and tried to help them out how we could. Uh, so as staff, so there are teachers. Um, the main subject is talking about the fixed and growth mindset. So the teachers usually focus on that part. And then there are TAs um, who help out the teachers slash the students. Um, there are peer leaders who host like study hours um, after classes. So like anybody can come and ask questions about whatever subject and they're there to help. Um, and then advisors are basically guidance counselors. So you go and you meet with them once a week um, and they you just talk to them about how you're doing, how your classes are doing and all that fun stuff. Um, so my supervisor is Michael Maskelow. Um, He's well-known in the psychology field. Um, he has a doctorate in psychology. Um, he was one of the creators of the Compass program originally. He also wrote a few books. So he's very well first in this. Um, and that's why he created it was because he knows so much. He knows how he can help the students. And he really knows how to get that point across and, you know, work with the students. Uh, so my role, um, it's kind of weird. Um, I'm the first person to do a psychology specific internship through the Compass program. Um, so at first, we, me and Master weren't really sure how I was going to be able to help. Um, but we knew that there's a way I could. Um, so what we kind of came up with was there are students within the Compass program that definitely need a little bit of extra help um, and a little bit of extra time to sit down with them that the teachers and advisors just cannot give. Um, so my role was to kind of take on those students and meet with them once or twice a week or really just whenever they needed it. And I can help them with homework or whatever they have going on in their lives. Um, it's kind of whatever it looks like for them. Uh, why did I choose this internship? Um, I'm very familiar with the Compass program. I did it my freshman year, um, which is why I knew it helped so much and why I had such a good relationship with them. So they were willing to take me on as a new intern and kind of work out what my role would be. Um, and it was on campus. I mean, it, it's right there. I go to my classes and then I just walk and go to my internship. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to take a bus anywhere or try and work out a commuting schedule, waste money on gas. Um, so it's just overall very con convenient. And it was the kind of thing I wanted to do. Um, you know, my goal was to be a guidance counselor or a clinician or therapist, and this would help me ease into that. So while I do help the students with their schoolwork. Um, I help with just overall advice and help them work through whatever's going on. Uh, so challenges that I have and that other people may come across if you do try and go this route. Um, for for one, it they don't just let anybody come and work with them for the Compass program. They really want people who have gone through it. That's why they said, okay, for me, because I've already been through it. I, I know what they expect. I know what they look for. Um, and I had a really good relationship with everybody. So they're willing to kind of see how it went. Um, so if you are looking at this, it would definitely help if you've been through the Compass program before as a freshman, um, or if you just happen to have a really good relationship with the teachers or the advisors or something like that. Um, other than getting into the Compass program, 
Oh my God, it is such a pain to try and get students to show up to the meetings. It's ridiculous. Uh, like, I should be meeting with a, stu a couple of students, you know, every day throughout the week. That just does not happen. I'd be sitting in the library and like I'm supposed to meet with a student at like three o'clock and it's 315. They're just not there. And then I get an email 45 minutes later going, oh, sorry, I slept past my alarm or whatever it is. It's like, all right. Um, so that was one really big issue that was really testing my patience. Um, the other one is just time management. Um, you know, it is on campus. So you, you have to take the right classes that kind of work around it. And you have to give yourself ample time to work with the students. So you're not like having classes in the afternoon and then you have to meet with the students early in the morning or at like five o'clock. Um, so trying to figure out the times was a little bit challenging, but not horrible. What do I like about it? Um, I like my supervisors. I love my teachers um, and all the advisors that are there. Um, they're all very, very nice people and they care, which says a lot to me. Um, you know, it's not often that, well, depends on where you are, but I feel like there's some people who say they care, but are just doing it for the job. These individuals went to the Compass program to be there. Um, and that means a lot. Like they really care about the students and they really want to make sure that they grow and become the best student and version of themselves that they can be. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing how this goes for the rest for the rest of the semester and the following semester as well. Like I said, there's just a beta. I'm the first person to do this. So I'm not really sure how the internship is going to end and pan out. There are still unforeseen things that may pop up. Um, so we're kind of taking it day by day. But overall, it's, it has been a ton of fun. It's damn. Well, I have to say, students not showing up. Now you know how professors feel when people don't show up for them for meetings or as a clinician when clients no show. Oof. So it's good experience. Yep. Yep. It's life lessons right there. So this is good professional experience, patience, and also how to follow up when a client or a student doesn't show up for you and how do you approach them afterwards. So it's good. Good life lessons you're learning. So this is good. Yep. All right. All right, Megan, we've got you up next. Hey. All right, so Shakebody is my internship site. So just some basic info. I'm at Cedardale Health and Fitness Center. Um, it's in Haverhill. It's about 15 minutes from school, so it's not too bad. Um, Cedardale's mission statement is um, they're committed to providing its members with the solutions needed to live a healthy, well-balanced life in an enjoyable, fun way. Our state-of-the-art facilities and equipment, as well as our professional staff, are the basis for a wide variety of programs, lessons, sports, and vibrant communities that ensure you will have a successful fitness journey. We strive to create an environment that feels like home, where you can truly thrive and transform into the best version of yourself. Join us today and live better, be well. There we go. So the population serves um, all ages. I see a very diverse age population that come in every day. Um, we even have a 90, 94 year old who comes in to spin every and props to her. Good for her. That's awesome. Um, we even have kids. So um, I'll explain more later, but we have a kid's zone so parents can drop their kids off. Um, during the school year, we take toddlers all the way up to kids who are eight years old. And then um, during the summers, we kind of increase that age um, to, I think, 12 years old. Um, we also offer lessons to kids like tennis, swim. Um, there's even like high school tennis going on right now. And we have like orange ball, red ball, green ball, yellow ball for kids, like different levels of tennis for them to play. And then 15 and up can use like any of the facilities, um, approved. And then there's also a summer camp 
um, down the street called Amazement, which Cedardale owns. Um, it's really cool there. It's awesome. And then there's also a rehabilitation center in the building, but it's not like a part of Cedardale. Um, but a lot of people who go to the rehabilitation center are also members of Cedardale. So, you know, they'll go there and then they'll come, you know, maybe to the pool for like a little bit and just kind of relax and like, you know, all that. I got my camera down. Okay. So my supervisor is Tyler Bussell. I had to ask him how to say his last name today because I had no idea. Uh, but he kind of makes my schedule and plans out my days for the week. Um, we discussed like when I first started my internship, um, what my goals were for that and what I wanted to experience going in. He's also my main line of communication. I always email him, um, you know, hey, like, what am I doing this week? And he's like, oh, let's do this this week. I'm like, okay, perfect. We also use Google Calendar to kind of plan out my schedule, which is really helpful to me because I use Google Calendar for everything. So it's really nice. And then Andrew Gunberg is the one who hired me essentially I reached out to him first about it um he's Cedarville's executive director and um we have check-ins every once in a while um just to kind of making sure I'm meeting my goals and talk about like any future plans that I have so my role is I work in reception to kind of work on you know interpersonal skills um my people skills and all that and I'm just you know being a friendly face to welcome people in I also work in kid zone because I do want to work with kids in the future um, so it's kind of nice because I get like a wide, like I get the younger kind of age group. I'm used to working with like more middle school, high school age. Um, so it's kind of nice to work with like littler kids just to kind of see how they're like. And then I also kind of work with the wellness and nutrition coordinators um, and like dietitians. I sit in a lot on their one on ones and I learn how like their systems work and just how they, you know, help members like with their wellness, nutrition and fitness journey. And I've met a lot of the department's heads to kind of learn what they do too, but that was just more, you know, kind of understanding how Cedardale works. So I picked Cedardale because I wanted to be in an environment that focuses on wellness, nutrition, and fitness, because I do want to work with athletes. Um, I haven't figured, like, I do want to work with kids, but, you know, I kind of want to work with college kids too. So it's kind of, you know, in between right now. Um, but I know they had like a lot of one-on-one -on -one client wellness programs. So I kind of want to see how those are done because I think one-on-one -on -one experience, kind of learning how to do that is super important, especially if you want to go into clinical psychology. Um, so like I said, I do also want to work with kids. So it's important to kind of teach them like how to practice wellness and live a balanced lifestyle. And in Kids Zone, we have a gym connected to it where we kind of, you know, let the kids have fun and like play basketball and like run around the gym. So it's super fun. So some challenges are not getting paid. And I think a lot of us can agree with that. Um, and because I'm at reception, it will sometimes get really slow. And I'll kind of just stand there and just, I don't know, it's just standing around not getting paid for it. So it's kind of kind of frustrating at some times, which is kind of another challenge too, because it will get slow during the day. I think around like one to three when, you know, people are in school, people are at work, super boring, but I mean, in the mornings, it's super busy. And at night, it's super busy, too. And then some members are kind of entitled. So but I think this happens anywhere you go, wherever you work and kind of customer service, because, you know, customer is always right. It's a little frustrating, but you just have to back up and, you know, de-escalate a little and just like let them do their thing. So what do I like so far? Um, I love the people I work with um, at reception and in Kid Zone. I'm around people my age, so um you know a lot of college students a lot of you know about to graduate high school so it's kind of nice to just be with people like that and like I do always love um talking to the older staff that I work with too so you know that's nice it's also a very chill but professional environment um so it's like we have fun but like if we're talking to a member we'll still you know not talk to like how I talk to like you know someone my age that I'm working with so that's nice at least. And then my uniform, I literally wear workout clothes. I don't have to wear business casual. I don't have to wear any of that. So it's like very nice that I get to wear something comfy. And another thing, I'm actually getting the experience that I'm looking for. So like I wanted to work on my people skills. So working at reception has allowed me to really gain that experience and, you know, be able to talk to people and not just like how I talk to my friends, but like, you know, older people, like you know, just all that. And then Cedardale just has so many opportunities that let you achieve your goals. Like if you're interested, like if you give them your goals, like what you want to focus on, they have just about like anything that'll help you like get there. So yeah, thank you.
Um, thank you so much. You are our first intern at Cedardale. So I'm really excited to hear about it and that you've got just a lot of different things that you've been getting to do, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of things to do there. I love it. It's awesome. Good. That's great. I'm excited about that because I know that um, Andrew really wanted an intern. So I'm excited that you're there. So awesome. You. Okay. Wyatt, you are up next. All right. Let me share my screen here. That working can you see that perfect all right so i work at uh, justice resource institute and i work at one of the branches that's in lawrence actually so i'm more so on the side of therapeutic mentors and um inpatient therapists and things like that um so i'll kind of get into that a little bit more but it's right in lawrence um so yeah that's the building right there if you've been to lawrence it looks like every other building in lawrence it's one of the mills that they turn into a bunch of work buildings but one of the little sectors is kind of the main offices of where it is. Um, and so there's kind of a, there's a bunch of different spots where JRI is located. So there's one in Lawrence, there's one in Gloucester, there's one, there's a bunch all over Mass kind of, and they'll kind of have their own sections. Um, so like the overarching um, mission for um, JRI by our CEO, Andy Pond, it is, uh, he describes the expanding JRI mission as attempting to reduce the quotient of human misery and that everyone has a right to the pursuit of happiness. I think honestly, like with the work that I've done that perfectly um, encapsulates like what we do for sure. I think that there's so many different sectors of work there and there's so many different um, teams that kind of work to solve different things and different problems. And it's kind of like, it capitalizes super well on kind of the complexity of problems and things, especially in this area where I am. Um, so it's a very well-rounded um, organization for sure. And like, it kind of hit a lot of different bases as far as mental health and um, the people that they work with. Um, yeah, there's 2,800 employees throughout all of Mass that work for JRI. I want to say that like, I don't know the exact number for who works for my exact sector, but it's kind of a smaller part of it for sure. So maybe like 50 to 60, if that, so something like that. Um, so yeah. And then these are just all the different things that JRI does um, as an organization. And you can kind of see how much ground they cover. Um, so intensive services and juvenile justice, uh, dealing with juvenile kids or like different disciplinary things. They do a really good job of um, behavioral health care and trauma. So that might be like a CBT type thing and really serious um, psychological kind of intervention with different kids. Um, community services where I fall. And so that's primarily working with children and families to kind of solve different things and kind of help them develop um, despite a situation they might be in as a family or economically or whatever the case might be. Uh, developing abilities, so working with different disabilities, special needs, things like that, do a really good job of that as well. Um, educational and res residential, that's kind of another branch off of everything where you're helping with the different, um, you know, kind of educational problems that somebody might be dealing with. And so they kind of go to your school and kind of discuss things with um, a kid that's in need or a high school student, whatever the case might be. Um, childhood services and foster care. That's like, a, I honestly don't know much about that exact service, but I know that um, it kind of takes up its own chunk and it kind of covers a lot of ground in the Massachusetts area. And then health and housing, that's for if you have like a physical disability or something that you're dealing with, um, it's kind of like working you through those different um, obstacles and kind of getting you back on the normal track of living kind of a thing. So yeah. And then my supervisor is Ashlyn Rowe, clinical supervisor. She has her LICSW, which is like really high up um, degree for uh, mental health, for sure. Um, she supervises all the employees under the children's friends and family sector of Lawrence. Um, so that's kind of where I fall into play. So I'm like, I came in as a therapeutic mentor, which is kind of like the first stepping stone as far as like getting into uh, the JRI operations. And so she kind of, make sure that everybody that's in that same role is kind of firing on all cylinders. We have meetings every week as a team. And then I also meet with her bi-weekly just individually so that she can kind of uh, make sure that I'm doing everything that I need to be doing for uh, submitting progress notes, making sure that everything's going smoothly with my clients, 
um, and getting a good idea of kind of what the families are feeling as far as like the services that I provided them. And then, yeah, she graduated from Simmons College and master's in social work too. So I have a super close connection with her. She's the best, could not be more supportive and everything. Um, and so, yeah, I, I keep very, she keeps very close to on me for sure. So my role as a therapeutic mentor, um, I work weekly with children to ensure that they're developing skills or skills that they might um, not be able to work on given the, the different challenges they might be going through. So some of these kids, like they have problems with their families, they have problems with kind of the areas that they live in. And so my job as a therapeutic mentor is to kind of go, I'll drive, I'll pick up a kid, I'll take him to like North Andover area, like different areas kind of, to kind of like put them in different environments to see kind of how they interact. Um, for example, like if somebody has really tough time communicating with employees or other people, um, I would take them to like get food or something and I'll be like, hey, like go order some food. And just kind of like monitoring that and kind of seeing how they work with it. And then um, coming off of that, kind of giving them like pointers and things like that to make them more comfortable knowing that I'm there to like help them. I'm not like judging them at all. It's kind of just like a very one-on-one um, -on -one, hands-on communication. Um, I say it all the time in class when I talk about my job. I think the most important part of it is just being unconditional and like showing up every single week. Um, and that's kind of the main thing is like, even if things didn't go well the last week, if you had a really bad interaction with a kid, um, you're still going to show up the next week and you're still going to let them know that like you're not going anywhere and like that you want the best for them. And I think that alone goes a long way with a lot of the kids that I work with because the areas that they live in and things like that, there might not be the same level of help like in their day-to-day -day lives where somebody is like looking out for them and making sure that they're kind of um, succeeding in certain things. And so I think that to have one person that shows up for those kids every week, it goes a long way for sure. Um, work with the youth hub to ensure a well-rounded service. So I'll work with their outpatient therapists as well. And I'm basically like, I say all the time, like I'm like the fun uncle version of what the actual like outpatient therapist does. So like um, I have a client right now who was working with his therapist and I get to meet with her like pretty much bi-weekly and she'll kind of like, frame things in a way for me where I can kind of like extend and expand on the things that they work on, but do it in a way to where it's like a kid would want to work on it. So she's kind of like the teacher and I'm kind of like the fun twist on it that makes the kid actually want to do it, especially given my age and everything. I think it's easy for a lot of these kids to like want to listen to you and want to work with you. And so I get to kind of go in and like have fun with it, but it's still like emphasizing the same points for sure. Um, and then work with the youth family to get a better, better understanding of goals. I'm constantly in contact with like, um, their parents, their sisters, their families and things like that. And I get to kind of use them as a resource for me to like, if they had a really bad week or something, like what can I work on with them? Like through the family's perspective and then kind of like, they use me a lot as, you know, like an emphasis on certain things. So like if the kid's like not behaving well or something like they kind of hold that to them. They're like, I'm going to tell Wyatt, like I will tell them. And so like that in itself is kind of their own. It helps them for sure to kind of like discipline them in certain areas if they're not getting it like in the moment. Cause I only meet with them once a week. And so it's kind of all that space in between is where I get to work with the parents and kind of make sure that everything is um, still firing the way that it should be. Uh, why did I choose JRI? Um, super rewarding. I think going into it, being in like wanting to be in a mental health field. I think it was the first thing that I saw that was like super hands-on and super like with people and with children. And I think um, that was like all, all I wanted all along. It was just to work with people or kids or whatever the case might be. Um, like I said, super hands-on. You get to learn about different people, cultures and way of life. Like I'd say the one thing in doing this work that I've walked away from is just how like how similar everyone is and how different they are at the same time and kind of like understanding how to not get caught up on certain things and understanding like how to um, talk with like different groups of people has been a really like great thing about the job as well. Um, Cause you have kids from different backgrounds, different things that they're struggling with and you kind of learn like who needs what and like what things about your own life that you've taken away that you can kind of help them with and kind of how you can twist different things um, to make their situation better. Um, it's an amazing work environment, like the office life, not that I'm in the office that much, but like everybody is super, super 
like they want you to do well. And like my supervisor, Alyssa, uh, or Ashlyn, sorry, not Alyssa. Ashlyn does a really good job of just like making sure that like I'm like comfortable with what I'm doing and that I'm not like slacking, but at the same time understanding that it's a tough, it's a tough job if you don't stay on top of it. And so I think that she has been super like patient with me through this whole process. It was kind of difficult, like first going into it, learning how to do proper progress notes and like doing all the paperwork and stuff. Um, but over time, like she does a really good job of kind of like pacing you along the way. Um, flexibility with schedule. So I'm not necessarily a full-time employee right now. I'm doing it in like an internship style where it's kind of like fee for service. Like I'm kind of doing it in sectors so I can kind of work uh, my, my weeks around it with school and everything. But um, even people that do have it full-time, um, a lot of them do work other jobs and like it kind of works out really well because you're really just you know, focus on those little two hour periods of time throughout the week. And so it makes for a really good, um, you know, time management skills for sure. And you can kind of work it around um, everything you got going on and then assist with cost of grad school. That was a big one for me going into it. So um, like Ashlyn went to uh, Simmons college, they have a like master's in mental health degree. And so if you like stay with JRI and you like want to keep working there, they kind of help you out with the cost of grad school to make sure that, um, you know, they want you to like go and like do really well in it and then come back and then continue to kind of work your way up in JRI, which I think is pretty cool. And then the few challenges that I've had, um, scheduling and units, units were something that I had no idea about until I started working at JRI. And I think the whole concept of productivity in general is kind of difficult for some people to get used to. But then over time, you kind of like adjust to it and you kind of start to understand it. Um, and again, that's one of the things that um, Ashlyn has helped me with out a lot with is like the payment and stuff like that. It gets, it's confusing. And then over time, you kind of figure it out and kind of, you know, you learn how to make it work in your favor. Uh, keeping client engaged. Um, I think they're kids. And so you kind of like my, my one role, the way that I would see it is like making sure that I am doing the best that I can to make the kids want to reach their goals. And so I think that that part is super rewarding. And it's also one of the hardest things to make happen at the same time, um, because a lot of them don't really want to come to terms with the fact that like I'm there as like somebody who's super supportive and their friend almost, but also like we're on a mission at the same time. And so I think that is like a tough uh, corner to turn at some points, because I start off very much like um, very getting like getting close to them, like understanding their likes and interests and things like that. And then kind of finding the right time to like switch over into like a work environment to where I'm really like making good stuff happen for them. Um, and then, yeah, I pretty much already hit it, helping the clients want to reach their goals. It's super like a lot. Some of them don't really know like why they're with me at first. And then over time, like, I think the best thing is making them comfortable with like their own situation and making them aware and self-aware and then kind of like growing off of that and doing it at a pace where it's not like, a super scary thing to them and making them understand that I'm not like going anywhere, no matter how bad it gets kind of a thing. So I think like kind of balancing that out is really tough, but it's also like once you can hit, hit that and like get to that point, it's like the most rewarding thing in the world. Uh, what I like most about JRI, um, I think it's incredibly supportive work environment. Like everyone's just so nice to me. Like since I've been working there, like everybody wants to help you out and, you know, kind of wants the best for you, which has been amazing. Um, it's super rewarding. I, I actually like love what I do right now, like every day, like if I could do this forever, like I probably would. Um, and so it's just super hands-on and I just love working with kids too. And I think I initially wanted to be like in a teaching role before. And so I think this is like a really like good, like one step off of that kind of a thing. So I think it's just super, I love it myself. Um, I don't get tired of it really ever. Um, and then it teaches you a lot about working with other people and it kind of teaches you like how to read somebody a little bit, like, not that like, you don't want to like overanalyze anything really, but like, it really helps you to kind of understand like where that gray area is of like how to help somebody without like jumping into their life and trying to like change everything around. Um, and so I think like, it's really just understanding the importance of being there for somebody more than anything. And I think that people try to overcomplicate like the actual steps to like helping somebody. But I think like, the one thing that I know for sure is like, I'm showing up like with a positive attitude with these kids every day. And I think everything just kind of like rolls off from there. And so I think like 
the most important thing is just showing up with like a positive attitude and like wanting to be there. And then everything else just kind of like takes care of itself, but really builds empathy for sure with a lot of different uh, kids and a lot of different backgrounds. So and I think that's it. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I loved working with therapeutic mentors when I was a clinician. They did get to do the fun stuff. I had to like tell and Tess, I know you worked with therapeutic mentors too. So I'm sure you've talked to Wyatt about that. But it's like I had to like teach them the skills and then you guys got to go do fun things with it and implement the skills. But I always wanted to go do the fun things, but yeah it's it's a blast for sure and i that's like what all the other clinicians said they're like like you just get to go and like you get to go to like trampoline parks and all this stuff and i'm like yeah like it's the best best job in the world so but but it's like a sneak it's like a nice sneak attack of like you're teaching them these skills and they don't even know like they don't even exactly know. and they're implementing all these great skills that they're learning and doing and you're helping them with it so it's really cool so that's great yeah great. yeah thank you all right, Eileen, you are up next. Hi. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. Can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I work at Charles River Laboratories and it is located in Wilmington, Mass. And Charles River is a pharmaceutical company specializing in a ver variety of preclinical and clinical laboratory, gene therapy, and cell therapy services for many different industries. And the mission statement is at Charles River, we are passionate about our role in improving the quality of people's lives. Our mission, our excellent science, and our strong sense of purpose guides us in all that we do, and we approach each day with the knowledge that our work helps to improve the health and well-being of many across the globe. And there are many locations worldwide, as you can see over here. Um, the client that we serve are pharmaceutical, biotech, agrochemical, government, and academic organizations all around the world. And... The staff, let's see. My supervisor, her name is Adonis. She's the best. Um, she Her position is being a laboratory supervisor as of now, but she was a research assistant, a molecular lab tech, and a lab tech before that. That was her first role. And she worked at Charles River the whole time. And she basically does lab rounds throughout the day to see if there's any complications in the lab. And she basically handles all the samples and the batches that we work with. And if there's any comp complications with anything, we always go to Donis about it. And she is the supervisor for all the Merrimack students that are there currently. So my role is a pre-processing te lab technician. And basically I retrieve samples, make sure that the paperwork is all correct. And I create batches such as Priya large, Priya small, Kingfish and et cetera. These are all just the batch um, names that we created for all of the samples. And I do review, I review all the samples before it's ready. And I do supply stocking, which is very important. Um, we work with a lot of micro pipettes and the tips and we run out of them very, very quickly. So I usually do the stocking and all of that. And also I attend daily scrum meetings. And basically what scrum is, is where we discuss about what batches that we're working on and what we also need to complete throughout the day. And we have like a daily task and a schedule that needs to be done. But majority of the time it doesn't get done because there's so many samples. And um, basically the um, batches that we do work with are all from animals. And we work with animals such as mice and rats. And we I work with fecal samples, tissues, body and oral swabs and environmental filters where they're in and if it's healthy or not for the um for the animals 
why Charles River? Um, it was offered to me by my previous advisor last spring, Jimmy, and working in a lab was never an option that was given to me. And it's also something that I've never tried before. So I thought it would be fun just trying it. And I do really enjoy it. This is also a paid internship, but it, which I got very, very lucky with. Um, some of the challenges is that it's physically draining throughout the day. I work from usually 10 o'clock to 4 30 but I usually do go into overtime as well because there's so many samples that I need to get done before I leave and it takes a lot of focus throughout the day um also if you make one mistake on a sample the whole sample is ruined so you have to contact many many people to retrieve that sample again from that same mouse so there's a lot of pressure when you're working in a lab but I do like a lot um, about Charles River is that the preprocessors that I work with are mostly college students, so I can relate to them. And they are very flexible with their hours. We get to choose our own hours. I usually work Tuesdays and Thursdays from nine, well, whenever my class ends at eight o'clock to 4.30 overtime sometimes. Um, if I wanted to get more hours throughout the weekend, I could. I also never thought I would enjoy working in a lab, but I do. And it's also something that's new to me. I am thinking about PA school, but my mind is slowly shifting towards research. Um, I'm a I'm a neuroscience major currently, and I am very interested in research. So it's really cool working in a lab. So yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> um, thank you. And what's interesting is people in the professional development class heard from one of our new professors and she started actually at the same lab. Before oh, really? She worked there before she went to get her PhD. So she oh. at the same place. So, hey, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, you like her. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Mercury. So yeah. You should talk to her about it. She would love Maybe that. Maybe I will, yeah. That would be actually very helpful. Oh, that's really cool. So yeah, she would love to hear that. That's very funny. Yeah, yeah I'll reach out to her. <laughs> I love that. Okay, Faith, you are up next. Okay, all right. I think I got the whole share screen working, so it should be good. All right. Maybe not. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just going to share it with you real quick. I thought I had it. It said I did. Okay. I just sent it to you. So I am at the Pettengill House, which is a nonprofit community social service agency. Um, the office is in Amesbury, but they outreach to Amesbury and then towns surrounding. So Byfield, Groveland, Merrimack, Newbury, Newburyport, Raleigh, Salisbury, and West Newbury. Their mission statement is to support and empower individuals, children, and families by providing education, comprehensive case management, and basic needs, and by coordinating community supports that contribute to individual and family stabilization, personal growth, and development. So for the population served, it's pretty much everything. They have departments and usually multiple social workers on each of the departments. So they do adults, they do children and families, they do seniors. And what's great is a lot of the times these populations will like overlap. So all the departments will kind of help each other out as well.
So this is just some of the staff. So Tiffany is the executive director. Lori Murphy is the best, which is behavioral event um, and substance support team. So she kind of like created this, like this includes like Pettengill and then other agencies like Age Span, which is for seniors and like Essex Outreach. And they all focus usually on substance abuse and behavioral events that come through, usually through referrals from like police reports and stuff like that. Um, so she focuses on like addiction and recovery services. And then the at the bottom, there's Heather Penny and Anna Nash, who are social workers. Both of them are in like children and families in the schools. Um, there are a lot more social workers and more staff seen as seen in like the other bigger photo there. Um, this is my supervisor, Lisa Prendergast. Um, she's the director of case management and she basically plans, advocates, and monitors the needs of clients. She helps connect in cl incoming clients to the correct department social worker. So our intake coordinator will basically like call people, you know, get their basic information. This goes to Lisa and Lisa will have like weekly meetings, usually on Fridays and basically like connect them to whatever specific social worker that they might need. Um, and she also meets with like staff members weekly for like ongoing cases um, and also with like the director weekly as well. Um, as an intern, I get to like shadow all the different departments and kind of just learn about social work as a whole. I help with and I've been doing like updated client intakes. This can be like in person, but mostly over the phone for me. Um, I'm learning to how to like assess needs and gain knowledge of like the resources available. So SNAP, um, which is like the food stamps, uh, MRC and SafeLink, which is like, I didn't know this, this is like a government like distributed phones. So people can get like a phone for free, which is nice. And then also I'm participating in community based projects such as Operation Backpack, which was at towards the end of the summer. So like late August, early September, which was just giving out backpacks to people in the community and the surrounding towns for free with like full school supplies like we'd get the list from the schools and stuff and they could like kids could basically go around and shop and this would range from like preschoolers to even younger and then all the way up to college students so that was a pretty cool program to be a part of um why did i choose this site it was local to me it's the town i grew up in so even if it's a little farther away from campus it's still like pretty short drive and it's only like 15 minutes from my house which is nice um there's a lot of different departments so I get to like explore like different demographics age groups which helps me in like finding out what I want to do like even though I did like explore the senior department and it wasn't like knowing it wasn't like my demographic that I wanted to go into and like confirming that was great but it's also still good to just like be a part of like I still did enjoy getting to like bounce around with everyone and I can kind of just like check the calendar see who's you know doing certain meetings or what can I sit in on or what's kind of going on, which is really nice. Um, and they're very well known and very like involved in the community. So it's just a good organization. Challenges, it can be like an emotionally tough environment. There's lots of clients that are struggling with mental health, substance abuse, financial problems. Some cases can be heavy, especially right now with like Massachusetts is having like a homeless shelter like crisis. So a lot of like the clients are like now facing trouble with like being denied shelter in like and we're getting to the winter obviously so it's getting cold so it's just kind of like hearing a lot more like disappointing news which is kind of sad um and you know cases are heavy and stuff it's a fast-paced environment there's always like people are just bouncing around to everywhere basically or like meetings will go over and then people are rushing off to a like a client outreach so there's always just stuff going on and there's lots to learn about, which is kind of a challenge because I feel like I'm intaking a lot of information, but that's also like a benefit because um, there is so much to see and learn about. Um, what do I like most about this site? I think the staff and just the people I'm working with, they're really like welcoming. I feel very like comfortable, very safe asking questions. Like there's no one there that I wouldn't like feel comfortable engaging with or going to. Um, and yeah, I've just learned a lot here. I think that's it. <laughs> okay, Julia, I'm sharing yours, right, Julia? Yes. Making sure I've got it up. There it is. Perfect. Oh. 
Okay, uh, I'm doing my internship at South Memorial Elementary School. Uh, it's in, it's um, the population is preschool to sixth grade. Uh, it's in Peabody. Um, the principal is uh, Jocelyn Sullivan, and the assistant principal is Jeremy Hinsman. Uh, PD's school's mission statements, uh, mission, mission statement is peop, um, is to prepare each student to reach his or her full and intellectual, creative, and individual potential through a fully integrated and diverse curriculum to meet responsibilities of citizenship. Um, Amy Galley is my supervisor. She's the guidance counselor, and Shannon Kane is the adjustment counselor. Um, my supervisor, or Mrs. Galley, she's been a guidance counselor at South Memorial Elementary School for 26 years. She has a master's degree in counseling psychology at, um, from Leslie University, uh, and she's certified in guidance N through 9 and 5 through 12. Uh, she works with all students, where the adjustment counselor works with a small um, population of students. Um, my role as an intern is to co-lead or more recently uh, lead a social skills lunch group, um, observe crisis situations, help support students, uh, assist the school counselor in communicating with outside service providers, and assisting the school with the HOPE Fund. Um, why I chose the site, uh, it allows me to work with a population that I've, ne I've never really considered working with, and it allow it, it'll help me figure out whether or not I want to work with young kids. Location-wise, it was nearby, so it was really convenient. Um, and I'll be work I, um, and I get to work with a diverse population of kids. Um, some challenges, uh, watching emotional crisis situations, um, seeing the kids struggle and not being able to help with some of the problems the kids face, but um, being there to support them helps. Um, but it's it's sometimes hard to see because there's some there are some students who are homeless and um, are in certain situations. And so it's it's tough. Um, what I, what I like about it so far, uh, I like bonding with the kids. There's one girl who always says hi to me when she sees me, makes me feel like um, special because she remembered me. Um, I like hearing all the stories um, and being there for the kids. It also shows me a new perspective, seeing how like um, in a kid's perspective, like what's important to them and what, um, the struggles that they go through and stuff. And that's all. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now we have um, Ness. I think I have, am I sharing that one? Uh, so my internship is at Milestone. Uh, Milestone is a short-term 
therapeutic residential program for at-risk youth uh, from ages 12 to 18. Goal of the residence is to work with and help adolescents in crisis situations, such as uh, family issues. Some of them have behavioral issues. Uh, some of them have trauma, substance abuse, things like that. Uh, it's part of a larger organization called the North American Family Institute, or NFI for short. NFI's mission statement is to create diverse and innovative opportunities for children, families, and adults to grow and heal. There are a variety of different treatment programs within NFI, including residential programs and outpatient clinics for both children and adults. Uh, so my role as an intern, um, so I update logs every 15 minutes, and they have this thing called uh, sides of life. So basically, you just have to make sure, like, where everyone is, and then I would write it down with their initials. So, like, for an example, I would say, like, A left for work. Um, I interact with the teams, uh, participate in activities. Sometimes they have like group projects and stuff like that that I do. Um, I help with cooking, cleaning, chores, and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I monitor outings. I chose Milestone because I think it's a good opportunity to learn about the human services field. And I, I enjoy working with the clients that I have right now. Um, but I'm still figuring out my career path. But I'm considering working with NFI in the future. My biggest challenge is communicating with clients and staff. Uh, more so staff overall. Um, sometimes I, like I have trouble figuring out what to do next if they don't tell me. I don't know, it's just confusing. Um, uh, and sometimes, like, clients respond better to certain staff, which can be difficult. And, uh, yeah. Those are all of our presentations that we have. Right. So one question I have, and it doesn't have to be answered by everyone, but I'm hoping a couple of people can answer it for people that will kind of watch the recording later on is um, if there's any advice that you would give to students that are currently searching for an internship or planning on looking for an internship, kind of what would be kind of something that you would tell them or share with them kind of in the process I can go yeah. so Cedardale was not the first internship I applied to I applied to I think like two others and I didn't get either of them so honestly I think those are kind of like blessing in disguises because like I'm so much happier at Cedardale than I probably would have been at those two internships so my advice is like don't give up if like you get turned down or like anything like that because like it is kind of difficult to like look for something that kind of fits what you want to do and like also don't like think just because this isn't something you want to do like it's not meant or like it's, it's not going to help you like in the future too that's what I think I don't know yeah no I think that's perfect advice because I think that you know what there's going to be aspects of every experience that's going to be helpful. So I think being open to just understand what those things are is just a great way to go into any experience. So yeah, very well said. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they would tell a student, sort of any advice? Uh, I I can... Oh, sorry. Julia. Sorry. Go. <laughs> Um, it's, it's sort of the same, um, I mean, sorry, um, just, uh, to be, like, open-minded and to, you know, consider places you might not consider, like, still in the area of your interest, but, um, be open-minded towards certain opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really important, too, because I feel like some people have 
one very clear idea of what they think they want and then it kind of closes them off and so I think having just the openness is really important because then you you never know it might be an opportunity that you never imagined so yeah I agree with that thank you Eileen so what I was going to say was kind of um, in the same area as Julia, but I, when I was applying for my internships, I applied to many different hospitals because that's, that's what I thought would be the setting that I belong in because I want to go into the PA field and everything, but I applied to Charles River and that's the only laboratory I applied to. And I applied to four other hospitals and I got accepted into all of them. It's just something was just different. And I was like, maybe I wanted to try something new. And honestly, I've learned a lot. It's been hard, but I have learned a lot. And I am low key considering research now. It's not just PA. So it just opened my mind up more. It's still in the same science field, but I just think that being open to any other options that's in your field is very, it's a very good idea. I agree. Absolutely. Because you just don't know. And it's like you don't know what you don't know, right? Like you try it. And the nice thing is, it might not be what you want. And then you know that, but it might open you up to something that you just didn't consider. And then you've got more options, which is never a bad thing. So I think that's really cool. So I love it. Yeah, great. So I, any other people are welcome to contribute, but we can also end it there because I loved all of that. That was perfect. Um, so thank you all so much. I love hearing from students. It's my favorite thing. Like I said yesterday, when we heard from students, I like hearing from agencies. They always say wonderful things. They're wonderful people that work with all of you. But I love hearing from students a little bit more or a lot more because it's just really great to hear about your experience. And I think other students get a lot more out of that too. So thank you all for, for letting me hear from you and letting other students hear from me too. All right. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Well, like, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.